Hello and welcome to building Java desktop applications and today we're going to take a look at using a properties file with our code. Now the great thing about a properties file is it allows you to write your code and reference an external file that has some information. Very much like we see here where I've got the title I'm going to use for my application listed here and I've got a version number and what that allows me to do when I write my code is I can reference this external file and then when I don't need to worry about the values in it until I come to deploy it so I can change those values at the time I'm ready to deploy and that's what my application will show to give you an example here you see I've got my Java file I've wrapped up in an executable file but it's still a Java program uh, I double click that and it just supplies some information which is taken as you can see from this properties file here so I've got the version number 102 there and I've got using properties file there so if we just close that down and I'm going to change this to using dynamic and I'll save that so that's now using dynamic properties file and if I run my program again you'll see that the value at the top here has changed so that's what we're going to do, that's what the code we're going to have a look at today. So let's switch to our IDE. Um, in this case we're using Eclipse and we'll make a start. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Java project file. Um, I'll just call mine properties file. I'm going to keep everything else standard. Um, it's, I'm selecting Java Standard Edition 1.7 and I'm in the navigator view just to explain things. So in the source what I'm going to do is create my first class. This is going to be the class that is going to do all the work. So I'm going to put that in the software pulse.utils package and I'm going to call this app properties. And we'll just accept everything else. So we'll just press finish and we'll get our class stub. And we're going to create a number of private properties. So let's let's create those and then we'll talk about them. So what we have here is we've got a private final string called file name and this points to where our properties file is located and, and what it's called. And I'm going to put this in the root directory of my application and I'm just calling it app.properties. You can call it anything you want. So long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. I've just called mine app.properties. Then we've got a um, static final um, class or object sorry which is actually going to be an instance of this particular class so um, I'll explain a little more about that but what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of this class and we're going to store it within the class so we can reference it um, then we're going to have a properties um, 
object. Now this is just using the standard Java util properties and that allows you to easily reference the items within your properties file. So we'll see how we use that in the moment. moment. And then we've got a message string. And this is a rather crude method, but what it essentially does is it will pre present back a message of any errors we've encountered whilst trying to access this file. Um, and we'll see again how we do that. So the next thing we do is we're going to build a constructor for this class. Um, we obviously need it because this line here, where we um, create this instance, is going to invoke this constructor. Um, and that's essentially going to do most of the work of, of this class. So we're going to make this private because we don't need anyone to invoke an instance of this class from outside of this class. Um, and um, so we're just going to make it private and that will take care of what we need. So what we have here is we've got an input string that we initially set to null and then we create a new file input stream using looking for the properties file that we defined earlier um, in, up in the class and then we load our properties object using the file input stream. So basically we're going to read in everything that's in that file and hold it in a, a, in a properties object in memory. In the event there's any problem reading the information we're going to throw an error and then if we have managed to successfully open the file um, we'll make sure we close it down at the end of the day. That, that's the general idea. So that's our constructor. Um, the other things we're going to need in order to be able to use this is we're going to need a means of being able to read a property. So the whole idea is that you can get a property from this file and display it in your, or use it in your application, we need a means of being able to read that. So in this particular case, we're going to create a public um, method that's going to return a string and it's just going to be a get property. And you're going to pass it a string value, which is the key. So you have like a key value pair. So the key is how you refer to it and the value is the bit that you will change from time to time. And all we'll simply do is we're going to do a return. Oops. T 
So we're going to return the property, the value that's associated with it. Nice and simple. The other thing we're going to need to do is we talked about having this message string that if there was an error, we would populate it with some value. And you can see us here saying, you know, error accessing properties file. So we need a method of being able to read that. Um, otherwise, there's no point having it. So another public method is going to take no um, arguments and will simply return the property message. And now we come to the key of the whole thing. It may seem strange to you having a private constructor that creates an instance of itself and stores it in itself. And the idea is that you can use this class from wherever you want in your code without having to have a global variable that is accessible from everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a public static method called get instance that actually takes no arguments and what you do is the reason why it's static is because you call the this method from the class the ob, from the class not from a uh, um, not from an object that's instantiated from the class so you, you actually call the class at properties dot get instance and it will return to you an object of type at properties the same object of at type properties and what you're actually seeing here is an example of the singleton design pattern. It's a very simple um, approach to the singleton design pattern, but nonetheless, it's this idea of every time you call this class and say, give me an instance, you will always get this particular instance. So whether you call this at the beginning of your application code or right near the end or down in some um, method that's cascaded down, you'll always be dealing with the same value. So we simply return our properties file value, and there you are. There is our class, I'll just save it, there's our class ready to be used. Next, we'll take a look at using it. Now, to use it, I will create another class I'll put it in the software post app package and I'm just going to call it app but I do want a public static void main um, as part of it I'm also going to extend the J frame So to speed things up, what I've done is I've put the code in for the application and I'll just briefly talk through it. Essentially, what we're doing is we we have a main J panel and then we've got a panel for the left-hand side and a panel for the right-hand side. And what we're doing is we're putting all the labels in our left-hand panel and all our values read from our properties file in our right-hand panel. Um, so we just set up a number of labels, author, copyright, title, version. Then when we construct our application, we're obviously creating a new panel for the main panel, which is just a simple border layout. And then for the left panel, it's a grid layout. Um, and it is again for the right panel there, it's another grid layout. And then for the left, you can see we're just placing values in there. Um, and then over here, this is the interesting bit so this is where we actually set the value for the author so we're creating a new j label just like we were but now we're calling this app properties class okay and then we're calling the get instance method which returns us that object that we were talking about earlier and then we're calling the the public method within that instance called get property and we're saying we're looking for application underscore author as a value um, so if we have a look at our file, we've got our application underscore author there, and the value it's going to return is John McNeil. So 
that's how we're setting the various values. And then all we're doing is we're adding the labels to the right hand panel. And then we're adding the left and the right panels onto the main panel. Um, and, um, and then we're, we're displaying the information in our application. And so if we look down at our main method, what it does is it says, I'm going to have an instance of app properties. I'm going to call app properties get instance. And all that's going to do is um, invoke that constructor that we said was private. It's making that constructor run and generate its instance. And then we are going to call the, to make sure it worked correctly, we're going to call the get message. And if the message length is greater than zero, that means we did encounter a problem and we shouldn't proceed, we should exit. If we didn't encounter a problem, then we will run our application, make it visible, and it displays on the screen. Now, just before we get run off and, and run that, what we need to do is we need to actually put our properties file into our project. So I'm going to right click on my properties file and I'm going to create a new um, file. I'm just going to create a basic file. Um, I need to remember what it's called. It's called app.properties. That's what it's called. So you remember what it's called. Just go finish. And just creates a blank thing there and then I'm just going to copy these options here paste them into there save it and you can see there it is sitting under my properties directory and now when I run my app I can see my values there and it's brought in dynamic because that was how I left the properties file so you can see I can take that dynamic back out to put it back the way it was, run my application again, and it's back to where I started from. So there you are. That's how you use a properties file in your Java application, and you can use it for a whole host of things, and you can have different properties files for different areas of your program if you want. Hope you've enjoyed that and um, have fun building applications using properties files.